I'll go ahead and start. So we have Wise of Minneapolis, then and now. This is a follow-up to the previous presentation I did about a month and a half ago of the Whys of St. Paul. Um, we already did explain what a why was, but again, when we really look at it, uh, it's a couple of different uh, tracks that basically form sort of a triangle. Um, if you look at it from above, it, it, it looks like the letter Y, but with an additional uh, track on top there to make in that triangle shape. And that's how streetcars or in railroad, uh, in the railroad industry, how locomotives or even full trains, depending on the size of the Y, can turn around without the use of a turning loop or without the use of a turntable as well. So to start off here, we have uh, most of our photos are in South Minneapolis. There are a couple in North Minneapolis, uh, but there are certain areas in Minneapolis that aren't represented here because I wasn't able to get photos and uh, Aaron didn't have photos of some of these other Ys here. But I'll first start off with uh, 4th Avenue South and 48th Street. This is on the 4th Avenue line, which historically was the first streetcar line in Minneapolis, in the Twin Cities area, actually, uh, to be electrified, but it certainly didn't go down to 48th Street. But here we're looking in the older photo from the 1950s. This is in a northeasterly direction. Uh, you're looking down 48th Street here. Um, yeah, you're looking down 48th Street here toward the east, and it certainly shows that the same building uh, that was in there during that photo from the 1950s is still there. Although our, our now photo for this one was taken within the last uh, 15 years or so. Next one we have is 48th and Chicago. This is the Chicago Avenue line. And we can certainly see that in this photo looking sort of in a northeast direction uh, that the building in the background is still present there. This was one of the uh, shorter turnaround wise, the uh, Chicago Avenue line went down to 54th Street, ultimately by the end of the streetcar era. So this is one of the wise where if it was a shorter trip, uh, it would have turned around here and then would have gone back north on Chicago Avenue to downtown Minneapolis. I did hear some noise in the background. Was someone asking a question? Okay. Here was the end of the Chicago Avenue line. This photo of the streetcar here is actually from a Minnesota Rail Fans Association a special trip that was taken about a day, or I believe it was the day after the Chicago Avenue line uh, closed. There are actually a number of photos from that specific trip and you can see buses moving back and forth on the Chicago Avenue line in the background. This is 54th and Chicago. Uh, again, I, I noticed as I was making this, a lot of the photos faced a northeasterly direction, but that's just the way it turned out. We can see in the 1950, I believe that would be 1953 photo, the PCC car sitting there at the very end of the Y on the uh, southern leg of that Y on Chicago Avenue, 54th Street crossing behind it. And then you can see in the more up to date photo that the same building that you can see in the 1950s photo is still there. Fifty fourth and Bloomington, again in a northeasterly direction. You can see the couple of buildings here are actually the same. This house, you can tell by the window arrangement, is the same between both of the photographs here, even though the streetcar is, of course, no longer present and the streetcar tracks are no longer present. Uh, this The streetcar itself is seen here just about to end its trip on the Bloomington Avenue line and enter the Y. So in the older photograph, which can be dated to about the 1940s, based upon the appearance of it without having ads on the outside of the cars, which were added in the 19, in 1950, uh, you can certainly see that the, the Y would actually have been behind the photographer because uh, the streetcars turned from Bloomington uh, took a, if you're heading southbound, that would be a right onto 54th Street and then actually backed down and back onto um, a sort of a grassy part on the side of Bloomington Avenue in that area. 28th Avenue South and 56th Street on the 28th Avenue line. This is certainly the part of the Minneapolis system where all of the numbered streets and the numbered streetcar lines jumbled together and made a whole bunch of confusion. 
but this is looking, the current photo is looking south on 28th Avenue South at uh, 56th Street, which is where that line ended. Um, it's hard to see because the photos don't line up exactly, but this building, I don't know if you can all see this gray building that I'm circling here with the cursor, that's the one that appears behind the streetcar in the streetcar photo itself from the 1950s. And so this photo was probably taken about, um, trying to think, the 28th Avenue line itself, this section of it shut down in 1950. Uh, so this was probably from 1950 itself or 1951. Uh, certainly the smaller streetcars here that are being used on this Minnesota Rail Fans Association special, uh, these shorter ones, which were originally made for Stillwater, were out of service. Right. We, oh, we lost, lost your audio there for a minute. Did you comment on the fact that that was a double pulled car? Uh, I did not comment on it was double pulled, but I'll go back to it. Uh, I was commenting on this one was one of the former Stillwater lightweight cars. Um, but uh, this, let's see, actually, I don't see a second. No, it, yes, it is. It's up. It's going up there. So this would have been one of the uh, double trolley pull cars that could have been used on things like the Western Avenue shuttle or on other uh, lines where it required just a shuttle car to be used. Um, I do know that when the Penn Avenue leg of the Bryant Avenue line uh, that would have run from 50th and Penn to 54th and Penn in South Minneapolis, uh, this type of car was also used when some construction work was being done with the tracks and it sort of cut off the line, got all the run back and forth for part of it. But again, this is one of the former Stillwater lightweight cars built in the 1920s and serving the last of the Stillwater system up into the early 30s. 34th Avenue line, uh, the, la the last section of it or the very end of it was at 34th Avenue South and 54th Street. Uh, you can see that the house here is still there. So that certainly helps us line up where these photos were taken. Uh, this is one of the lines that shut down in the earlier half of 1953. But the streetcars would lay over on 54th Street. Um, and so if we're looking at the intersection here, if you're following the cursor, 34th Avenue would go north-south in this direction, and then east-west would have been 54th Street here. So we're looking in sort of a southeast, south-southeast direction, or east-southeast direction. So the Fort Snelling Minnehaha line in Minneapolis had a sort of shorter turning Y that would have been at the location of the uh, well, the new VA or the VA hospital that's currently in that location. Um, this, this Y was actually used for a couple of different reasons. Uh, one, after the Fort Snelling section of the Minnehaha Avenue line was shut down, this is where the cars would terminate and then turn around turn around and go back toward downtown Minneapolis at 47th Avenue South and 54th Street. Uh, another interesting thing here is there would occasionally be <clears throat> for the Fort Snelling uh, line or the uh, West 7th line to Fort Snelling in St. Paul, every once in a while, one of those cars would actually go past Fort Snelling up the private right of way to 54th Street and then terminate here at 47th Avenue South. And that certainly with the construction of the VA uh, coming in the, I believe the early, late 40s, early 50s, uh, that would have allowed folks who were going from St. Paul to basically have a one seat ride without having to transfer to the Minnehaha line in order to get to the VA hospital. Uh, sometimes this line, the line from the Fort Snelling line in St. Paul would actually also be connected to the Mariah line. And that way it would actually be some fairly long line that could take you uh, across much of St. Paul and just a little bit into Minneapolis here. Uh, but this is looking north on 47th Avenue South at 54th Street. Uh, so you can see that there was indeed a Y in this location. This is also where 
because a lot of the wives, they would keep ash bins and sand bins as well. Uh, they used to just be sort of on this easement on the side of the street there. 46th Avenue South and 45th Street. Uh, this was on the East 25th Street line, which was very confusing uh, with all those street numbers there. Uh, but the now photo I took a couple of years ago uh, just so happened to wait for a bus to be coming so I could imitate this photo right here of one of the streetcars and kind of get a then and now of both the location and the different forms of transit that are used. Uh, but this was the last Y on the East 25th Street line before it then went across the uh, Ford Parkway Bridge and went to the Ford plant in St. Paul. So this is jumping quite significantly from South Minneapolis up to North Minneapolis. We just have two photos of Ys in North Minneapolis here, and then we will jump back down to South Minneapolis. Uh, 44th and Oliver, this was at the end of the Fremont Avenue line. This connected with Chicago, uh, the, Chicago <clears throat> the Chicago Avenue line on the south side. Uh, for this, we're looking, the now photo uh, is looking to the south. Uh, the previous, the streetcar photo is looking to the sort of the south, southeast in this direction. But you can see based on the window arrangement of these two houses here that this is indeed the same house showing the then and now location here. Another of 44th and Oliver, but basically if we took the camera and just turned about to the opposite direction, this is looking in a more northeasterly direction. Uh, not much appears to be similar between the two photographs other than that this is the same location here. Forty second and Thomas. This is the Penn Avenue North line, not to be confused with the Penn Avenue leg of the Bryant line, which is on the opposite side of Minneapolis. Uh, the Penn Avenue line was also connected with the Chicago Avenue line on the south, and so that would, in total, be the Chicago Penn Fremont streetcars. But this is showing a northwesterly direction, uh, indicating the same building is still here. This corner store. The exterior is certainly much more modified than what it was in the 1950s when the original photo was taken, but you can tell based upon the arrangement of where the door is here that that should be the same building. I have to add that that was my streetcar stop where oh, I caught nice. the streetcar. And behind the car, uh, the second shop in was uh -huh. Degatano Shoes, and that was Pat's grandfather's shoe store. That's cool. I always like to hear stories like that. So was that the shoe store that you talk about having the, oh no, that was the drug store where you had the x-ray machine you could stand on? And what that was the shoe store, right, with the foot x-ray machine. Could stand on it and see the bones in your feet. That was wonderful. Great way to pass an afternoon. Going to the next one here, uh, we're jumping again pretty far, um, but again, there's most of the most of these photos here in the South Minneapolis area. Uh, 51st in France, which was one of the uh, shorter turnaround points for the Como Harriet line. Uh, you can see the intersection is very different now. Now uh, the photo is looking in an easterly direction. Uh, the now photo that we have, which was taken, I believe about 10 to 15 years ago itself is a little dated because the gray building on the right side of that photograph, I think has now been replaced with another apartment structure. Uh, but definitely between the two photos here, a lot has changed as well. Although I think the streetcar was a bit further down the block uh, than the now photo would indicate. Also, one of the interesting things to note here is, and I believe Aaron has discussed this in a couple of different presentations, the shorter turnaround area for the Como Harriet line used to be on 50th Street. Uh, but because that was part of a state highway, it was decided to move that Y one block to the south to 51st. Uh, but if you look at the older photo here of the streetcar, you'll notice that the destination signs never, at least the destination on some sign on this one did not change to reflect the change from 50th to 51st. It was just left at 50th, and that's what we can see on the destination sign there, Como Harriet to 50th. Just an interesting little detail. 
54th in France, and this was the end of the Como Harriet line um, on the sort of west side, you could say on the Minneapolis side, even though France itself is the dividing line between Minneapolis and Edina. Uh, but definitely look very different between the two photos here, showing that uh, the house here has given way to what appears to be an auto care store or an auto shop. Skipping and over that's to one of the intersections where the uh, mm -hmm. the first couple of hundred feet is a little wider than the, the street in the background mm -hmm. to give uh, room for cars to get around this big thing st stuck in the middle of the street. Yep, this, uh, uh, and you're referring to uh, what that uh, I think Aaron has referred to them as wide bulges, uh, the, the sort of, yeah, the, the larger area so cars could get around the streetcar. Um, certainly something that has uh, appeared in Minneapolis, and you can still see the, uh, the vestiges of it um, to this day. Uh, I believe, let's see, trying to think, there's a couple of other intersections where that certainly is the, the same. Um, unfortunately, I, couldn't, I don't have a now photo of something like 50th and Penn uh, where I could show that, but that's, that's another good example of where uh, for, another, for about 100 feet or so, where the Y itself used to be, the street is certainly wider. Is that where the extra road is on the right-hand side on the, the more recent picture? Um, let me see here. Because you can see like the car parked above that is at the curb, but then obviously the street extends to the right-hand side. Mm -hmm. Is that what you guys are talking about? Yes, that, okay. that appears to be what, what that would be because you would need okay. an addition, a little bit of additional road to get the car, um, uh, to get an automobile on the side of the street car so it could go around it. Got it, okay. Curiously, late, that, that I'm sorry. Go ahead, yep. Brian, oh, here, Brian. In the late '50s yeah. or early '60s, there was still a sign on uh, Penn about uh, up towards the uh, lake north of uh, 50th that said mm -hmm. "Bus Y," and I, when mm -hmm. I first saw that, I had no idea what a bus Y was. Yeah, bus Y. I haven't actually yeah, heard of the term bus Y be used, but yeah, I'd assume that. Um, I'm not as familiar with the, the operation of the buses here, but I'm assuming that that could potentially be a place where the bus would have to turn around itself. But that, that is a very interesting detail. That's something I'll add to kind of look up later. That might have been from uh, the, the time before we had the 40-foot GMCs, the, uh, <clears throat> the max that were 36 feet or something like that. Mm -hmm. would, would have been a lot easier to Y than a 40 foot Jimmy. Okay. Yeah, it probably would be fairly difficult to do that in the middle of an intersection. The next one we're going to is a 50th and Bryant on the Bryant Avenue line. This is where uh, the streetcar that we're seeing is going south on Bryant um, would eventually have the destination of 56th or yeah, 56th and Bryant at the end of the line there. Uh, but the tracks that you're seeing here, the Y itself served one as a shorter turnaround line here at 50th, but also the tracks split off at 50th and the Penn Avenue portion of the Bryant Avenue line uh, would have split off here, run on 50th to Penn and then southbound to 54th. Um, and so parts of this Y served sort of a, a double purpose in that sense. But here we see a uh, PCC streetcar rattling over the diamonds, you could say, at this location to head south. And so the photo itself is looking in a southeasterly direction. Fifty sixth and Bryant, uh, you can see that the same church is in the background there uh, between when the streetcar photo was taken in the early 1950s and when the now photo was taken within the last 10 to 15 years. Thirty-eighth and Grand on the Grand Avenue line. This photo here, I couldn't find one that lined up perfectly, but because there's not a lot of photos of the Grand Avenue line, I wanted to include it anyway. Uh, so the main subject between these two photos is certainly with the now photo, we have the, the large building here. In the earlier photo, the streetcar photo, you can see that building in the background as well. Um, and so we're looking in very different directions here, but we can still see that 
for the most part, a number of these stores are still present when compared to that previous photo there. You can also see the potholes in the street. Uh, uh -huh. Grand Avenue was oiled earth, not paved. Yep. And I believe uh, Fourth Avenue was also an oiled earth street. Xerxes was an oiled earth street with tracks until about 1948 or 49 when they relayed it with uh, real pavement. Mm -hmm. It Wouldn't wasn't. It be, um... Did I interrupt you, Bill? I was just going to say, wouldn't it be funny if the same pothole appeared in both the before and the after photos? <laughs> I swear <laughs> it does. Right. It's Minneapolis. They don't repair the potholes. <laughs> True. Um, one of the other interesting things I've heard about uh, with, with the Grand Avenue line, and it, it can certainly get confusing because we're talking about the one in Minneapolis, not the one in St. Paul. Uh, but with the Minneapolis Grand Avenue line, I think the street was pretty narrow. And so there's um, some documentation of cars that are parked along the side of the road, jutting out just a bit too much uh, to where street cars would actually sort of, um, well, either the motorman would see it in time and stop the street car, or it would just slightly graze the car along as the street car went along. Uh, certainly in the winter when, uh, as we all know, the streets will certainly get narrower every subsequent time they're plowed. That would certainly be an issue with getting streetcars down Grand Avenue. But I, I think in a couple of the, in one of the books, I think in Twin Cities by Trolley, uh, by um, Aaron Isaacs and uh, John Deers, I think they talk about that. There were times in the summer when you would hear a streetcar whistle blowing just continuously blowing uh -huh. and you knew that it was somebody who was blocking the track. <laughs> yeah. Of course, and some, sometimes wouldn't, uh, wouldn't cars back then be able to sort of be bounced off to the side with uh, quite a bit of work? These, these are post-war cars were pretty heavy. Oh, okay. Uh, the next photo we have here is of what at the time when the streetcar photo was taken was 54th and Nicolet. Now it's Diamond Lake Road and, and Nicolet Avenue on the Nic Nicolet Avenue line. Um, the photos are looking in roughly the same direction, the northeasterly direction. You can see that uh, although the exterior of some of these buildings has been modified quite significantly, the same buildings are present in both of these photos. Uh, the streetcar itself in this photo would have been backing into the Y uh, this was a shorter run car. Uh, the Nicolet Avenue line, at least by the time this photo was taken, went down to 62nd Street at a turnaround loop that, because there was a little bit of extra real estate there, was actually turned into what we would now call a park and ride lot. Uh, but at the time, it was just, hey, park your car here and ride the streetcar in. Uh, interesting, uh, another uh, interesting detail. Oh, sorry. Am I speaking over someone? Okay. Um, another interesting detail that I just remembered with the streetcar in the photo here, the destination sign itself says Grand Monroe. Um, this is one of the vestiges of when the Grand Avenue line in Minneapolis was abandoned. That was actually, that line used to be connected to the Monroe line in Northeast Minneapolis. Uh, when the Grand Avenue line was abandoned though, the Monroe line was connected to Nicollet. They just didn't update the signs. Uh, but it, it appears here that the streetcar backing into the Y, the uh, motorman has already changed the destination sign um, instead of saying Nicollet to say Grand Monroe, just to indicate the, the ultimate destination of that streetcar on the Monroe line in Northeast. Look at all the uh, attachment points on the nice curve of the overhead there on mm -hmm. the trolley wire. Yep. Beautiful sight. The hardware store in the background where it says paint, that's owned by Settergren's. And Phil Settergren was a longtime volunteer uh, at the car barn. Hmm. Then we have 58th and Nicolet. Um, I said by the time of the abandonment of this line that the, the line actually stretched down to 62nd Street. 
um, at least in this photo, because this was made prior to the exterior signs being put on the streetcars, which would sort of indicate it was at least a pre-1950 photo. Um, it was about 1950, uh, excuse me, 1947 or 1948 that the Nicollet line was extended from 58th, which for a long time was the terminus to 62nd Street. Uh, so from the streetcar photo, I'm not necessarily sure uh, when exactly this was taken, but when that photo was taken, it could have been that 58th was indeed still the terminus. Either way, there was a turnaround Y there anyway during the time. Um, and so this is right behind that, uh, I believe this is right behind that uh, Cub grocery store um, off of Nicollet there near uh, 59th, 60th Street in that area. But it certainly shows uh, quite a different scene between the two uh, when, when you compare the photos.